Noel. Okay, I am so excited to be here with you, Nicholas Cole. You go by Cole. You are an amazing YouTuber. You have an amazing YouTube channel talking a lot about ghost writing and digital products. And obviously, I'm a YouTuber, but I am a real estate entrepreneur turned YouTuber. So you have so much expertise. So I'm so excited to have you here, ask you a couple of questions and really get you to share some insights on how anyone could get into ghostwriting or start an agency or, you know, do all these amazing things that you're doing. So first of all, welcome, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. I, it's uh, it's high praise to call me a YouTuber. I, <laughs> it's uh. This is a very new channel for me. I would I would hardly call myself one yet, but you know, we're getting there. I see it. I see it. So actually, let's get right into that because I do consider obviously you have over 20,000 subscribers. That is not a small fee. Obviously, I've worked to grow my channel. Um, but at the same time, people do not realize how hard it is to get subscribers and it is not something that just comes easily. So, you know, kudos to you. You have over 20,000 with just 100 and some odd videos and you actually have a video. Let's really get into it. You have a video with over 96,000 views. Um, the title of the video is Say These Words and People Will Buy Anything From You. It's actually a video that I watch. You have this irresistible script. So let's get into some content about that because you really know how to get people to sign up with you. You know how to get clients. You know how to, you know, sell yourself and your services. So talk about, you know, what, for, you know, some things that are in that video for those that haven't watched it, obviously we'll put a link to it, but let's talk about that because that, that, that's like your viral video. Sure. So uh, offer scripting. So yes. dis disclaimer, right? Um, this is really just my variation of, I, I know a lot of other people have used this type of script. Hormozy's used it. Um, I'm part of a mastermind, Cole, Cole Gordon's eight-figure boardroom. They talk about it. So this is really just my variation of it. Um, and so how it goes is before you can talk about the solution of anything, no one can care about the solution until they first care about the problem. Right. So a lot, of, a lot of times, right? And I mean, you see it in real estate, you see it with everything. Yeah. A lot of times people will jump to, you know, I have this thing for sale and here's how great it is. Yeah. And the reality is someone can't really internalize how great it is until they first understand the problem that it solves. So right. the first half of this quote unquote irresistible offer script is really what is the problem? And ideally you are educating the person on a problem that they didn't know they had mm. or a problem that they know they have. They just haven't gotten around to solving. Yeah. And so you're starting with the problem and then you're going, okay, so what is the consequence of that problem? So you're, you, you're either aware of it or you're not aware of it yet. But these are the bad things that happen as a result of that problem. Right. And then what is the ultimate negative consequence of that? Which is usually more of like an identity thing or a I'm unhappy in my life or I'm unfulfilled. There's an ultimate consequence of not solving that problem. Right. And the person needs to understand those three things before you go, okay, well, now here's that we've my, anchored yeah. our, yeah, now we've yeah. anchored ourselves in the problem, right? So now here's my solution. Here are the benefits of that solution. Here are all the good things that's that solution is going to lead to. Right. And here are the positive outcomes, again, identity, life, yeah. that yeah. that is going to lead to. Yeah. And so all I was really doing was going, you know, here's this script. And I have used this script to sell millions of dollars worth of ghostwriting services. My first company was building a ghostwriting agency. I now use it selling all of our digital products. We've just recently crossed that milestone of we've sold over $10 million worth of digital products. So I know it works because I use it yeah. all day long. It is time for you to change your life. You need to come to the Grow Your Wealth event September 27th through the 29th in sunny Orlando, Florida. We literally are having a three-day event with me, Noel Randall, where I am going to be teaching you about getting business credit, getting approved so you get business funding, and how to use those business funds to create wealth for yourself. You literally can use business credit and business funding to get millions of dollars in funding in your business's name and use that funding to buy income generating assets. You can buy real estate, you can buy stocks, you can buy inventory for your business. You can actually grow your wealth and you do not have to rely 
on your personal credit and your personal savings. There is so much money out there available for businesses and it is time for you to learn how to do that and grow your wealth. Get your tickets right now. We are selling out quickly and you can use code YouTube to save. Go right to the checkout right now, growyourwealthevent.com. Use the code YouTube and save right now. I cannot wait to see you September 27th. Don't be late. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's really get into that because again, you're in some great masterminds. I too have been in some that had a very similar thing. This is why I caught on to it because again, I do YouTube, I do real estate, but I also do coaching and mentorship. And so I similarly use that script. That's why I was like, oh, this guy is amazing because it is so true. Getting them to hone in on the problem. And it actually works in any, any industry. This is not just for digital products. This is not just for, um, you know, if you wanted somebody to buy real estate. But in many cases, I would use this same kind of script that you said with a little different editing to it connecting with my story about why you want to sell me your home and not go into foreclosure. So many people that watch my channel know that, you know, I buy houses and I'm a real estate entrepreneur, but I started off broke in my parents' basement, no money. And I got a coach that kind of told me, tell people what happened to you when you were in foreclosure. Explain how terrible that is. Explain, you know, the 10 years on your credit report. Explain sheriff coming to the house, throwing everything out. Again, letting them know the problem because some of you go, oh, it's not really a big deal. No, let me really tell you all of the, the downline ramifications and then let me give you the solution. And then that would make people more apt to, you know, buy real estate subject to, or where I could do the lease purchases, where I could do a lot more creative things. But if I just went in and was like, oh, let me buy your house for pennies on the dollar, no one's going to be interested in that. You know what I mean? But if I'm yeah. like, I'm saving you from foreclosure, I'm going to catch up those mortgage payments. I'm going to stop you, you know, that from being on your credit report, I'm going to increase your credit score. I'm going to help you move. No one's going to come embarrassing you in front of the neighbors. Like I would really go into all of what happened and let them visually kind of like imagine themselves like, this this problem you get what i'm saying this thing happening to them and then offer the solution and so you're right it really works when you can connect to their problem and get them to really see how big of a problem they have before you just start offering your products your services um your solution or whatever so i, I just found that that irresistible offer to be just amazing um but let's keep going so how would someone you know let's just say it's, it's an entrepreneur not like myself or you no digital product no real estate could they do this with landscaping business? Could they do this with a Absolutely. hair business? Yeah. So talk about that because I know you've actually, you know, uh, yeah. helped other people in other industries. I mean, I, I think it's a it's an amazing question. You know, I'm a, I hope to be a dad one day, and I think about you know how I want to pass this along to my kids, for example. And you imagine, yeah. you know, like a 12 year old knocking on some doors down the street, and the 12 year old, you know, goes up to the door and is like. You know, I'm looking for a summer job. Do you want to hire me? And the person's like, yeah, no, of course right, not. Right, right. But if the, if the 12 year old knocks on the door and it's like, you know, hey, Mr. Stone, I've noticed that for the past four weeks, uh, these weeds still haven't gotten cut. You know, right. and and I and I see like you leave kind of early, not to be a, a stalker kid, but I see you leave kind of <laughs> early in the morning, and like you get home late. You seem like a busy guy, right? Yeah. And right. and when you don't cut the so problem, when mm -hmm. you don't cut the weeds. I have to imagine the missus isn't very pleased, right? Right, right. But then, okay, so constant, like, uh, yeah, bad thing that starts to happen, right? Right, An ultimate right. negative con consequence, right? And yeah. I'm sure, you know, you have a lot better things to do. And this is just eating away. Like, this is just another thing for you to think about. And that's got to be really annoying for you, right, Mr. Yeah. Stone? Mr. Yeah. Stone's like, yeah, I hate this. You know, well, yeah. great. I'm yeah. Jimmy. I live right down the street. And this summer, I'm going around and I'm cutting people's weeds. Solution. The benefits of that is that I will take care of everything for you. You won't have to worry about it. You can go to work. You, you don't have to think about it. I'm going to come every Sunday. I'm going to cut the weeds. I'm going to bag it up. I'm going to put it out for recycling, right? Benefit, benefit, benefit. Yeah. And ultimate positive outcome. Hey, and I think we could both assume, you know, uh, you're happy. The, the missus is happy. Life is good, right? So right. All, I, all I charge is, uh, you know, $20 per week and I'll take care of this for you. Yeah. When you hear that whole thing out loud, it's impossible to not sit there and go, that sounds right. like a great offer. Right. 
Right. I love it. And so another part, let's start getting into offers because so many entrepreneurs, the reason why there's usually two reasons why businesses fail. Obviously, they don't have enough customers or clients um, to sustain the business. So in other words, they don't have enough capital. You know what I mean? They're, or, you know, they're having trouble generating leads and turning those leads in, into customers. And so when you have like these irresistible offers, OK, we know that there's this element to it. There's this element to getting people to buy your thing. And obviously, we know that one of the, 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 the major ways is, is really outline what the problem is and how you are a solution. But I think another thing that you mentioned, and we can kind of get into a little bit more, is some of the things that makes them act quickly. OK, because, you know, one of the things, again, he's going to close the guy, you know, just using your, your, your future son. He's not going to say well, get back to me, you know, if you, or, or let, you know, or, or here, here's my number, call me if you want it. He's going to kind of close them. And I feel like there's a lot of entrepreneurs that have an issue with closing out the sale, asking for the sale, you know, doing an assumptive close, for example, like, all right, so when I, I'll, I'll get started on Sunday, you know what I mean? And just kind of closing them out. All right, billing address when you're ready. You know I mean? Different ones kind of work for different industries. You know, I'll be like, okay, all right, let's just get this going right now. Let's get this agreement so I can start showing the property. You know, I do kind of like a lot of assumptive closes and I'm sure you have those same things. So kind of talk to me about how you're able to convert so many people. Cause like you said, you made over $180,000 a month with your agency. So you're really good at like closing the deal too. I, I can see that. So, well, thank you. Uh, many years of practice. Um, so I'll, I'm going to start high overarching point of view. I'm going to then go really tactical. And then I'm going to talk through just some thinking here. So okay. very, very high level point of view. I do not believe that sales is about sales. Right. I, I believe that, Sales is 100% a game of education. Mm. If you successfully educate the person, they will see you as the expert. Yeah. If you educate the person, they will see you as the solution. So yeah. first of all, I think this sort of self-inflicted fear of like, I don't want to be salesy. I'm not yeah. encouraging you to be salesy. I'm right. encouraging you to educate the person on right. what are all the bad things that are going to happen and what are all yeah. the good things that could happen. Yeah. Second, super tactical. The easiest way to inject a little bit of urgency into a sale is going, no problem, but I'm only taking on five clients right now. Right. And the thing is, that's not a lie, right? right. If you're, if you're a 12 year old, oh, tell me about it, <laughs> right? Like you can't work with a million right, people. With a million people. Exactly. I get the same thing in my business there. I'm like, you, I, we're only taking a certain amount of students. Like I can't mentor everyone. So you do actually have to be your in or out. Good point. Yeah. So that is, it's super tactical, very easy. Just yeah. do that. And it usually solves the problem. Mm -hmm. However, third point, just sort of thinking here, mm -hmm. the, the thing is a lot of times people are afraid to ask for the sale, but really what they're afraid of is asking the person why they don't want to buy. And that is the best question to ask is if someone's okay. like, eh, I want to sit on it. You just go, do you mind if I ask, like, how are you thinking about this decision? Like, why isn't this a no brainer for you? Mm. And when you ask that question genuinely, they yeah. will tell you the answer. Yeah. And then all you have to do is go, all right. Like, for example, if you, if you say, um, I, uh, here's my offer and they go, well, I've been burned in the past. Okay. Uh, well, that's a really guarantee. easy problem to solve, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, I want to make sure that you don't get burned. Here's some sort of guarantee or here's some sort of way of me de-risking this for you. Right. So right. all you have to do is ask the question and they will tell you the answer. Yeah. I'm going to tell you another thing that I I, I think is, is, is that I learned. And again, we're, we're a mentorship program. We meant, I mentor now, but I was in many mentorship programs. And my mentor told me, you're actually doing them a disservice by giving them all that information, all that education, and then not giving them some sort of offer. What would be the point of getting on this long call, this sales call, the strategy session, whatever you want to call it, this meeting that they do where you're telling them this, all this great stuff you can do and how many people you have helped and all of this stuff, and then not make an offer. That to me is just such a, a disservice. And, and I, 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 I firmly believe that. And I firmly believe that's why people fail in their business is because they don't realize that they're actually harming people by not offering them a service, by just giving them information and then letting them go along their merry way. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there's a, uh, there's a great 
adage in the world of writing, which is write what you know. Mm. Well, the adage in business is solve problems, you know, right? Because if you're solving a problem that, you know, like all of the problems I solve are essentially for the version of me 10 years ago. Yeah. And so I know version of me 10 years ago wasn't right. really the most open at the time. Right. And he was frustrated and he didn't want to spend any money and he came up with every excuse possible. Right. Yeah. So me now, I have to look at me 10 years ago and go, I am going to drag you across the finish line. Yeah. Because I know why yeah. you're experiencing this problem. Right. And so you have to have that level of conviction. And the only way you can have that level of conviction is when you're solving problems that you know intimately. Good point. Very good point. Very good point. I think if we were talking about like, um, you know, why people can't sell or why people's businesses fail. One, I don't think that they're making enough offers, you know, constant, you know, you, if I educate you, I'm going to make you an offer. And again, to offer, I don't care if you say no, I don't care if you say yes, I made the offer. I don't want to do a disservice by giving you all this great information and then not telling you how to work with me. Yep. The second reason I would say is um, that fear of rejection. Like I said, you cannot care if they say no, because like you said earlier, you got that opportunity to say why. And then now you can actually overcome the objection, whatever we want to call it, and really find out the core reason as to what's going on. You know, whether it's I need to talk to my wife, I need to look into the X, Y, and Z, I need to go pet, pet my dog first, you know, whatever, you know, reason that that's holding them back. If you ask the question why, you're no longer afraid of that rejection. Would you agree? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, you have to remember that it really isn't about you. Mm. Like when someone's on the fence, yeah, it might be some part of your offer stack or the way you presented it. There's always room to improve, but always, ultimately, yeah. right. It, it, it's, it's almost always the other person that has something going on in their life, some sort of faulty belief, some sort of, I got burned in the past. Yeah. And so where you can be most helpful, you know, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big believer in therapy. And I like to think that a lot of sales is really just a different version of therapy in a sense, where when you start asking people questions, they will tell you their life story. Yes, they will. <laughs> and, and, and that's where you start to realize that so much of this game, like it's not about tricking people. It's not about manipulating them. It's right. very genuinely just going, I want to understand you and where you yeah. are. Yeah. I want to listen to you and make you feel heard. And yeah. then I want to educate you. And if yeah. you don't buy from me, that's okay. But I want you to right. walk away from this conversation more educated than when you walked in. 